Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks with Greenergrass.com. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, home to the world's busiest airport. I'm getting ready to fly one of the longest domestic flights, I guess probably the longest domestic flight out of Atlanta. That's to Honolulu. This is a particularly exciting journey because it's on a 767-400. Now these aircraft are being retrofitted by Delta for an even longer life ahead of them, uh, but this one has not been. So it's sort of a, a trip down memory lane uh, looking at the old Delta One cabin. I cannot wait to share this with you. So let's check out this service together. I headed over to the Delta Sky Club because Delta One passengers on flights to Hawaii have access. The best part of this Sky Club? The deck overlooking the ramp. It allows sweeping views of the world's busiest airport. It's worth mentioning this route was the very first one I ever made a video about. That was only two years ago and 14 and a half million views later, I've learned a lot. When I arrived at the gate, I was excited about this nine hour flight to Honolulu. Not just for the flight itself, but because our airplane, November 844 Mike Hotel, was wearing the special Sky Team livery. Members of Airline Alliances, that's Sky Team, Star Alliance, and One World, are contractually obligated to paint some of their airplanes in special schemes representing the Alliance. Boarding was on time and I was in my seat 1D before I even knew it. Like all Delta One flights, passengers are met with Weston heavenly bedding, including a pillow and a blanket. There's also an amenity kit, a bottle of water, and a printed menu. Now don't get me wrong here, having this bedding is a wonderful treat. Finding a place to store it though, that's a bit of a challenge. I finally stuffed it in the cubby where thousands of other passengers had put their feet before. All of that is pretty standard for a flight labeled Delta One. A key difference on flights to Hawaii though, the pre-departure beverage is a Mai Tai. These seats include a reading light, plugs, and a small table to store a laptop or work during the flight. The 767-400 is a long airplane. Naturally, I was incredibly grateful for my seat in the very front row. What a treat. The only disappointment, nah, there was not really a good view of those GE engines. Once we were in the air, I checked out the in-flight entertainment. Delta has IFE on most of their planes, and the selection is fantastic. These screens, though, not very impressive. I'm glad they're being replaced kind of like this tiny tray table. As we crossed the mighty Mississippi over Memphis, I was ready to eat. Delta now allows their business and first class passengers to pre-order meals through an email that comes out before your flight. I chose the beef and was happy about it. In its current configuration, this airplane has 178 main cabin seats, nearly 18 inches wide and 32 inches of pitch. 28 premium economy seats offer the same width as economy, but add three more inches of pitch. They're both arranged in a 2-3-2 configuration. There are 40 Delta One seats arranged in a 1-2-1 configuration, and they offer 20 and a half inches of width and 77 inches of pitch. The retrofit will make some changes, chiefly adding open suites in Delta One and creating a new premium select cabin with reclining seats. Back to my old Delta One seat, which I'd left a mess. Delta's Wi-Fi worked very well. I used the time to catch up on my friend and fellow YouTuber Blake Edgington's Instagram posts. Hope you're following him. Meanwhile, below, the landscape was much less exciting than Blake's posts. But fast forward just a few minutes and crossing the California coastline just north of San Francisco was exciting. A quick word about this crew. They were fantastic. Sometimes flights to Hawaii can be a drag. They tend to be loaded with passengers using miles and points to redeem the flights, which means they aren't major money makers for airlines. They're also notoriously difficult for cabin crews to work because people are often in, shall we say, a party mood. 
I've experienced my share of flights to Hawaii with crews who aren't that interested in top-notch customer service. Not here. This Delta crew was in the holiday spirit. It was a great flight. A second meal was offered shortly before we began our descent into Honolulu, and it was a beautiful approach. I assess my international business and first-class flights using an unscientific methodology I jokingly refer to as the Jeb score. Even though this is technically a domestic flight, I thought I'd give it a rating as well. I look at five factors. The lounge, the seat, the in-flight entertainment, the food, and the service. The Sky Club was very nice. Its greatest feature is the fact that it has views of the ramp. There were plenty of seats, but the food could definitely use some improvement, so this is worth four out of five stars. The seat is, in a word, terrible. Of course, they're in the process of replacing it, which is good, and I've sat in this seat many times before and have always rated it with three stars, so nothing changes there. Delta's in-flight entertainment is great, but the size of the screen really hurts them here. I'd normally give them four stars for the content, but my screen was hard to use, and in fact, both the remote and the screen failed to respond to touch. And unfortunately, this earns three stars. Now, the food was great. Nothing too special. It was certainly business class food, and it was tasty. There are four stars here. Finally, the service. In typical Delta fashion, they shined. What a great crew. They got everyone in the island mood. Five stars here. So Delta earned 19 out of a possible 25 stars. What do you think about this flight? Leave a comment and let me know. And as always, between now and the next time, see you in the sky.